Most of you are very young, but you should know that there was no response. We were on our own. We had a president uh, at the time who has since been elevated to, to sainthood in some quarters, who would not say the word AIDS in public until more Americans had died of AIDS and died in the entire Vietnam War. And when they did speak of it, they spoke with hatred and cruelty. And I was so angry and I was so frightened and it seemed like everybody I knew was going to die and nobody would even know that we ever existed. So on November 27th, 1985, as people gathered for the annual candlelight march, Joseph and I had stacks of poster board and sacks of magic markers, and I had Harvey Milk's old bullhorn. And I said to them, you know, we've lost a lot, more, a lot more than Harvey. We've lost a lot more than George. How many of you have lost someone? And people were like, afraid to speak up. And I said, write down their names. People were putting initials or say, write Tom. And then one kid taped two pieces of cardboard together and wrote Thomas W. Farns Bill, my brother. And other people looked at that and became ashamed of their shame and began to write the first and last names of their friends and lovers and neighbors and colleagues who had died. It's hard for you to imagine what an act of courage that was for people at that time. But those days, you know, there were, no, there were rarely funerals or memorials. There'd be maybe a death notice saying he died after a long illness or unspecified cancer. And the families would come in and they'd sell the furniture and burn the body and leave. And, there's people to this day, I don't know what happened to them. But people began to write the first and last names. And then we marched, as we always do, down Market Street to City Hall. And we left our candles there for Harvey and for George at the steps of City Hall and around the Abraham Lincoln statue. Then I had everybody walk another two blocks down Civic Center to the old Federal Building, where Reagan's Health and Human Services Division, West Coast Division, was headquartered. And earlier, we'd hidden extension ladders in the shrubbery, <laughs> and I got, a, I got a nun with a beard on a bicycle to distract the police over here. <laughs> and then we pushed through, and we put our ladders up against the wall, and we climbed up with big rolls of tape on our wrists, and we covered the gray stone facade of the old federal building with the names of our dead. It was a cold night, drizzly. There were no speeches or music, no chants. Just thousands and thousands of people standing in the drizzle and reading these names on the wall and whispering to each other. And when I got off my ladder and walked through the crowd, I could hear what they were saying. I didn't know he was dead. When did George die? I didn't know Frank was sick. I went to school with him. Oh my God, we were from the same hometown. And you, know, you, could just, you could just feel this deep yearning need not only to find a way to grieve together for our friends who had died so young and so horribly, but also to try to find a way to break through the stupidity and ignorance and cruelty and greed that even today hampers our ability to respond to what has become the worst pandemic in human history. And I got to the edge of the crowd and looked back over the heads of the crowd at that strange patchwork of names on the wall. And I thought to myself, it looks like a quilt. I thought of my grandma. I thought of my great-grandma back in Bee Ridge, Indiana, and the quilts that she had made from remnants of my great-grandpa's pajamas. One of them's on my bed at home right now. And that was such a, a warm and comforting and middle-class, middle-American, traditional family value sort of symbol. And I believe in traditional family values. And I believe that they should apply to me and to my family. And I wanted to reclaim that notion. And I thought of the Conestoga wagons crossing the prairie and the, the pioneer women at the cook fire sewing and the slaves in the south digging out remnants of fabric from the garbage and sewing them together into things that had beauty and gave warmth and comfort. And I thought, I'm going to make a quilt.